Hey guys, so uh, this is a short video on how to perform vCenter upgrade from 7.x to 8.x. Uh, basically, uh, we are running a lab internally with VMware SDDC. So uh, this one I just wanted to uh, run through before doing the actual upgrade. So I've set up a you know 7.x vCenter and then there is one ESXi as well. So this one is a temporary vCenter just for the uh, upgrade just to see how it goes. So basically, if you see uh, this one, the IP address is a.24 and this is the host name. And I can access this vCenter right here. So I have a vCenter and I also have an ESXi host part of it. So this one is 7.0.3 and this is the build number. Um, so similar to the previous video, which I made from 6.x to 7.x, I think pretty much the upgrade process remains the same. I don't see uh, you know, a major difference going by the documentation. So let's do it together and see if there's any difference or if I hit any issues in between. Now let's go and mount the VCSA 8.x ISO and then Let's go to the UI installer. Okay, so let me run this. Okay, uh, so the UI remains same. Similar to last time, we have install, upgrade, migrate, restore option. So I'm going to use the upgrade option. And yeah, the same banner which we saw previously, uh, that you know the vCenter with an external PSC will be converged to vCenter with an embedded. That remains same even for a.x and also there's no more the Windows version of vCenter. So we'll begin with the stage one where it deploys a new vCenter. So uh, as you know, we need a temporary IP uh, for this process and uh, it doesn't really require a DNS entry or the forward or reverse lookup, just a temp IP in the same subnet where your source um, you know, uh, vCenter is present or any routable network should be also okay. So let's begin. Uh, we go ahead and accept the license agreement and then source appliance uh, details. So here is my source appliance. Let me go and put the host name of this. Connect to the source. and the password and the password for the root and ESXi vCenter that manages the source appliance. So my source, uh, since it's a nested environment, uh, this is my actual vCenter IP or FTDN where this nested vCenter is created. So I just provide that Shields here. Okay, next. Set the certificate warning. Okay, now uh, it's asking for the vCenter deployment target. So, pretty much same process. So, I'm going to use the same vCenter, which is the actual vCenter, not the nested one. Uh, and then this be a not local and the password. So I'll choose the folder here. This is where I want my a.x appliance to be deployed. Go next. And I choose the vSAN cluster. And what should be the target vCenter name? So here uh, you can provide the VM name, this is the VM display name, not the host name. So I will just call it as vCenter 8x. The password for root. Next. Since it's a small deployment, I'll just go with the tiny. Next. And I'll place this disk of this vCenter on the vSAN data store with pin disk mode enabled. 
for the networking, I use the network, which I know uh, can talk to the source network, which is this. And this is where uh, the temporary IP is required, which I've already secured from the list of IP, uh, which I have. And the subnet mask. And the default gateway and the DNS. So you really no need to create any DNS entry for this. It's just a temporary thing. So just put in the details, click on next. And this is the summary. So my source vCenter, it is on a different target vCenter and what's the name, deployment size, and all the other details can be validated here. And I'll click on finish. So this process is gonna take a while. I will pause the recording for now and resume it. All right, guys, so it took about 13 minutes to complete the upgrade stage one, which is like deployment of vCenter server. So if we go here, uh, we can see we didn't have a.x now. So we have it here, the appliance is deployed. Now let's proceed with stage two. And um, also, right, sometimes if we close this installation wizard, right, to restart it, it's good if you can just log in uh, to you know the management console 5480 and we can kickstart the stage two from there as well. So let me continue. And stage two is loading. Right. So which is like you know basically this will transfer the data from the old appliance, the data and the configuration. So let's go next. I think we should get some warnings about the compatibilities and other stuff. All right, so after a couple of minutes, uh, this was the output. First one, it says, uh, you know, IWA, which is integrated Windows authentication will be deprecated in 7.x and it continues to be available in 7 and will be phased out in future. So if you're using IWA, it's good to use alternate identity method. And uh, files that are not compatible with 8.x will not be copied over. And uh, this is about the, extension uh, the VMA cloud service provider which even i'm not sure about but yeah i think these are just warning so if it is really alarming for your organization then we can just work out on this if not we can just close and go next and uh, since my source b center is just a test one there is not much of data if not you will really see uh you know a big amount of data even if i go with the last option which you know, the transfer happens for configuration, inventory task and events performance, it is still quite small. So I will go with the same uh, one where I need everything to be transferred over from the source to destination. And this is the customer uh, experience improvement program. Uh, I want to leave it checked because when you go for the uh, lifecycle manager upgrade uh, within vCenter, right? Uh, we need this option to be enabled. So I'll go next, I'll verify things here. And then, yes, I have bagged the source. So it's very important. Uh, in my case, I did not do that or show a demo on how to do it, but there is a way to do a configuration level backup of vCenter. And it's uh, good to have the uh, you know configuration backed up before doing this upgrade. So I will go finish here. And the source vCenter will be shut down. That's because the destination or the a.x vCenter will take the IP over the source uh, and the FTDN also uh, will be taken over from the source. So it's expected that it has to shut down. If not, it'll be a IP conflict in the network. Click OK. And this process will take some time. I will go ahead and pause the video and resume once it's done. 
for you guys. So uh, around this stage, right, I did get the uh, error, unable to authenticate user. So this one is similar to the previous one. So when I Google it, right, I see most of the users are complaining about this. It's the exactly same thing which I got. So the suggestion here is to go ahead and you know log in with the 5480 and the upgrade should still continue. So what I'll do is I will leave the wizard as is, but then I will go and log in here. Okay, let me see if I see anything different on what the actual visits, yeah, definitely. So this one stopped the vCenter installer in installation wizard, right? It stopped after popping up the error. I closed the error. Sorry about that. Uh, it clearly mentioned unable to authenticate user. So I close this and you can see when we log into the 5480, the stage two of upgrade is still continuing and it's going good. So no need to panic when you see that error. All you need to do is just close the installation wizard, log in here, and you should see the upgrade is continuing. Okay, I think it's going to take some more time. Uh, let me pause the video and be right back. All right, guys, it took about 30 minutes, roughly including the issue which surfaced uh, which was even uh, seen before in 6.7 environment uh, when we moved from 6.x to 7. Dot. So the same issue we hit and uh, the registration was just closed and log into the 5480. And here you see the live updates. The upgrade was still continuing without any issues. And we have successfully completed the upgrade of the center server 7.x to 8.x. So let's close this out. And if we go back to the vCenter, uh, we should see, okay, yep, we have to log in here again. Um, yeah, so the source one is shut down because this one had the same IP, right? Uh, we have to use the same IP and hosting. So the source is shut down and the destination is up now which is a.x and let's go ahead and try accessing that so i go back to a browser login Just taking a while. And nested environment, as you can see, the CPU spike, the memory is almost 100%. Okay, so here we go. We have logged into the vCenter server a.x the name is 7.x so maybe this is a good idea like if we do not name our vCenter specific to a version because post upgrade the host name is pretend so better we give a common name without any version and we can go and check the summary we are on a.x is the build number perfect so that's it. So for this video, um, this was it. And in the next video, I will be upgrading this ESXi host, which is in 7.x version right now, to a.x. So uh, most likely, we will be using the update manager, the lifecycle version, to do that. So let's explore in the next video. Thank you, guys.